I'm Mark Dawson from The Self-Publishing Show, and this is Self-Publishing Spotlight, where we shine a light on the indie authors who are changing the world of publishing one book at a time. Hello, and welcome to The Self-Publishing Spotlight. We meet indie authors at all stages of their careers and ask them a series of five questions. Five questions about their process, their mistakes, and their successes. Five answers that will help you level up your own author career. My name's Tom Ashford, and I'm part of The Self-Publishing Formula. Don't forget that you can get your self-publishing resource kit at selfpublishingformula.com forward slash starter kit. This week's guest is Hannah Lynn. She's written five books in the contemporary fiction and sci-fi genres, and she lives in Austria, soon to be Jordan. Welcome, Hannah. Hello, welcome. How are no, you doing? welcome. Why am I saying welcome? I'm sorry. I'm so- I get bumped. You know what I mean. Thank you. Thank you. That's what I meant. <laughs> it's there all good. Go. It's all good. Uh, here's a little secret. I've actually read one of your books. Have you? Yes. Which one did you read? Uh, the Afterlife of Walter Augustus. Well, I thought it might be that one. Yes. Did you enjoy? I don't. Oh, this, the, did, did you enjoy? I don't want to go down that route. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll leave it at that. I did Shall enjoy I? it. I did enjoy it. Oh, very I'm much very so. glad. Thank you. Very good. Um, so yeah, so you've got two different genres there. You've got contemporary fiction and sort of sci-fi dystopian. You mentioned. Um, do you want to go into into your books a little bit before we start with the five questions? Yeah, that would be great. So um, I've got a range out there as a minute as I said amendments was the first book I wrote which was the is the dystopian um when I was sort of just just starting out there and um and since then I've moved into more of a contemporary and humorous angle um so last year I released the afterlife of Walter Augustus um along with the further the first three in my peas and carrots series so peas carrots and aston martin peas carrots and a feather boa uh peas carrots and six more feet um and the afterlife of walter augustus i'm not really surprised that that's the one that you've read because that was the one that won the uh, kindle storyteller award last year which was really rather exciting i imagine (laughs) cool well if we jump into the first question it's uh why do you write um I just have an awful lot of stories that I want to tell. Um, I'm always working on more than one book. I always have two, quite often three books on the go um, at the same time. And I just never have a moment where I don't have an idea of something I want to be writing. So, you know, I'll get to the point like, oh, what will I write when I finish this one? And there's another idea already there and waiting. So, um, yes, I just have lots of ideas pinging up the whole time and distracting me from finishing one but that's pretty much why I write fair enough uh did you when did you start uh writing so I um I wrote a lot of, you know, when I was younger in my 20s and I sort of tried with various ideas and I started novels and um you know got three quarters of the way through or did a first draft um but it was when I had the idea for amendments and the concept that I was like actually I, I really want to make something of this. I think it's a really great idea. Um, so at that point, I started taking writing courses wherever I could, learning what I was doing, you know, and trying to improve it as opposed to just writing. Um, and that was when I lived in Thailand, just before I moved to Malaysia, which probably about 2011, 2000, around then. How many places have you lived? <laughs> Quite a few. Um, yes, I lived in the, the UK initially and then moved to Thailand for four years, spent five years in Malaysia, um, have spent two years in Austria. And as you said, I'll, I'll be moving to Jordan in a month's time, although I'm in complete denial about that in the minute. Nothing is packed. You would not think we are moving anywhere by the state of our house. Well, that sounds very exciting. Um, in terms of your publishing history, so uh, are you are you indie? I am self-published, yes. Okay. Would you switch to um, traditional publishing if that was offered? I I don't know. Um, One thing with the genre that I write, and I use genre in a really loose term with books like The Afterlife of Walter Augustus and my new book that's coming out later this year, Fiona and the Whale, is I don't fit very well (laughs) into a particular genre. And therefore, it can be quite tricky to market it. Yeah. Um, and I think that's an issue with with both indie self-publishing and with traditional publishing. You know, it's 
easier to market if you can be put in a box and go, you know, this is a thriller. This is a romance. This is a book about a dead guy and a live girl. And it's kind of, well, no, he, he's, it's not, it's not paranormal in a paranormal sense. He's just dead. You know, yeah. it, it's not easy to sell it itself. Um, but with that, I also like the fact that I can do these cross genres, however I want to call, have you like to call them, books, because I'm not being restrained to. Okay, I'm now a this author. Yeah, you know, I've for the books I've got planned um, coming out over the next eighteen months. I have got more of this humorous fiction, but then I've also got a YA series that I'm planning on putting out there, um, and I've got a mythological um, piece because the self-publishing gives me the freedom to do that. Then again, I also want to be able to afford to do it <laughs> full time. It's a, uh, at the minute, I'm happy where I am. We, I just have to wait and see. Yeah, fair Again, enough. That's not a very clear answer for you. Sorry. No, that's good. It's good. It was a, there's a lot of elaboration there. It was good. Um, <laughs> Sorry. That's great. Uh, question number two is a, a bit of an easier one. It's uh, how do you write? So are you, um, are you the sort of person that sits down and plots out the whole story or do you just uh, take an idea and run with it? No, I, I see you think it's an easier one. I didn't think feel like I fit into either because I have to know where I'm going yeah. and I, the end is just so important to me. I like to plot down the key points and sometimes do like a chapter summary, but then as I start to write it, it goes down its own route. Um, I'm a several draft pe person. So I am not someone who will like immaculately plot a whole book so that their first draft is good to go. In that yeah. sense, I'm more pantry. I need, I need several reviews to get me there, but I still like to have some structure when I start. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, so do you have a particular time and place that you enjoy writing? Um, time wise, uh, I get time where I can. So normally it's in the morning. So I'm an up early and try and get at least an hour in before the the day job begins. Um, I'm pretty lucky with where I live at the minute. I'm actually sat on the terrace looking out at a lake, uh, which is, it's not too is bad. where I, it's not too shabby at all, uh, which is where I do like to write. But at the minute I, I try and grab whatever I can, whenever I can, but morning and evening around the other work. Yeah. Well, that leads us into question three, which is, are you a full-time author? If you are, how did you get there? And if you aren't, what steps are you taking to make it happen? No, no, I am not. I'm still a full-time teacher. Um, I am trying to get as much written as possible, really, the steps I'm taking. I've got uh, the Peas and Carrots series I've already mentioned. Book four of that is out at the beginning of August. Um, and then I plan on releasing another two in that series next year in 2020. Yep. Um, I've got another three standalones, two of which I want to publish this year, one next year. And for 2021, I have the YA series that I mentioned that um, I hope to release all of those in 2021. Nice. So you're still um, quite busy. So still quite busy. Yeah. Cool. Well, question four is, uh, what mistakes do you think you've made and what have you got right? Um, I think with Amendments, my first book, it now I look at it, it should have been a series and it, it clearly is a, a series, um, but it wasn't when I went into writing it. I didn't think enough about the larger arc of it. Um, and because of that, it's taken a lot of reworking and a lot of drafting to get into a position where in a few years time hopefully i'll be able to to relook at that and get the the rest of the books out but as my first one i was like oh these you know these small things don't matter yes the small things do matter because they form little plot holes that get bigger and bigger the more you sort of prod them yeah um so that's that's something i i got wrong in terms of getting it right um I know I'm not very good at the whole genres and writing to market necessarily, but I always have a lot of passion about what I'm writing. Um, so while it's difficult <laughs> for my husband in particular to market anything at all, um, I feel strongly that that 
that's the best way for me to make the most honest books that I can to be proud of what I'm doing. I, I have to be able to write like that and skip between, you know, types of books, stories and, you know, I, yeah. So I feel that I've got that right for me. Yeah. I don't know if that's a right thing in a terms of if you want to do this full time. Um, but yeah, for me, that's how I have to do it. Yeah. And if you enjoy the books, then I think you're more likely for, you know, the readers to enjoy it as well. Yeah. You know, I think, I hope so. you know, obviously a really good writer could probably write in any genre and, you know, if they know enough about it, make it really good, even if they're not a big fan of it themselves. But um, I feel like, you know, usually the best books are from people who, are, you know, enthusiastic about those stories in the first place. Yes, I agree. I think, I think you can tell to yeah. some extent. So, just to jump back to the uh, the last question a little bit. So, you're a full time teacher. Um, would you be in, Would you be looking to to transition from being a full time teacher to a full time author, if possible, or are you quite happy having both both worlds? Um, I I would look at transitioning. Yes, I don't know. I I love teaching. And, you know, part time would be would be fantastic. I think there's there's a, a lot of a lot of enjoyment to out of the job. You know, I've been doing it for 15 years now. Um, so I obviously really enjoy it. Um, 14 years. And I also know that in times when I am writing a lot in the holidays, like now it's very easy for me to become sort of <laughs> reclusive yeah. and and not see anybody and i i know i've spoken to other people who've made that transition actually from teaching into full-time writing and and it's quite a shock to go from being surrounded by so many people every day to being on your own and then the other thing is inspiration you know just day-to-day -day inspiration being out there with other people mm. is is what gives me ideas you know not necessarily the job but you know just general conversations and people you're talking to and I I am aware that myself I said I'm likely to become slightly reclusive if I was full-time but I do I would like to be in a position where I am not scraping for time for the writing yeah because at the minute it's it's a 5.30 get up every morning to make sure I can get the hour in then. And of course, if my daughter wakes up as well, then, you know, it's just a normal real life. You know, you, you have to fit it in around other things. So it would be lovely if I was in a position where I could go, okay, this day, these days, I know I will have this amount of time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. That is where I'd like to be at. Okay. And, uh, Last but not least, question number five is what's your final piece of advice for authors starting out in indie publishing? Uh, I think you have to put in the hours. You have to put in the hours and you have to be prepared that a lot of the time, most of the time, it won't happen overnight. Yeah. You read all these stories and I, I get emails from people who you've you know, read this and this and, and you know, how much do I make? And is it, it's like, no, that, that's not how it works. Yeah. You know, it, it is a lot of hours. It's a lot of investment in your time. Um, and, you know, sometimes financially and socially. Um, so either you want it enough that you keep going, even when you're not seeing the results that you hope for, or, or you quit. Um, and if it is what you want, if you have a story to tell, tell it, don't let people or yourself say you can't do it. You know, so in my family, we have a joke that it's a, it's a good job. My name spelt the same forwards and backwards because I can't spell anything. You know, I've always suffered, um, only mildly, but you know, from difficulties. Um, but that's what editors are for, are for though, isn't it? <laughs> that's, what, that's what editors are for. Yeah, uh, yeah I think I, I'm, I'm quite hard work, but, you, you know, it, it just takes a bit more. I'm, I'm not going to, to stop just because it takes more drafts for me to get something right or I don't see my own mistakes, you know. I want to keep writing, so I'm going to keep writing. And, and that's my thing for, for people who are just starting out is, is if, if you want this, then really understand it's, it's a commitment, you know. You, if you want to commit, go for it or if you just want to write for fun you know just write that's whatever amazing. you want that's, yeah that's that's amazing too um but if you are thinking of doing this as a career as like i said i'm hoping to it it takes time 
and it takes time that you have to put in and there's no shortcut for that yeah okay well that was fantastic those are your five questions uh thank you very much for coming on thank you and uh yeah <laughs> thank you very much for for having me and for your time today that's it for this week's self-publishing spotlight don't forget that you can get your free self-publishing resource kit at selfpublishingformula.com forward slash starter kit. And if you want to appear as a guest on this show, send us brief details about yourself and your writing at selfpublishingformula.com forward slash spotlight dash guest. I'm Tom Ashford and I'll see you again next week. <laughs>